All right, thank you for joining me, everyone. I'm Sophie Alexander of the Nutritional Wellness Center, and I'm excited to be here today talking all about bloating and constipation, diarrhea, and how to get to the root of it. Um, this is a topic that I find myself you know, working on on a regular basis. It's one of the most common things that people come in uh, reaching out for help about. And it's also something um, that I have a lot of personal experience with. It was a big part of my story of how I became a nutrition response testing practitioner and got into the field of nutrition in general. Um, so very short, especially because some of you today with me joining me um, know me and know the story, but very briefly for folks who don't, um, you know, I was generally, generally a healthy kid, healthy adolescent. So I had, you know, a couple clues of things that, um, that I know now in retrospect weren't optimal, um, especially dealing with allergies and, and dealing with severe menstrual cramps once I hit puberty. But it was really in college that um, I became aware that something was really wrong. And it was through uh, the, these digestive issues. Um, I started struggling with really poor blood sugar handling. I would get very shaky between meals. Um, and then once I did eat, I would get extreme bloating, a lot of pain, pressure, gas pressure, um, and um, yeah, what I described, you know, as, as stomach aches, digestive aches. Uh, it would get so bad. I have memories of you know eating at the dining hall and then needing to go to orchestra rehearsal because I play the viola, right? So I need to go to orchestra, and I'd be lying down like before orchestra started, like on the floor of the auditorium, just trying to ease the gas pain and waiting for gas to pass to know that. Um, I could feel better and like get through rehearsal. So I didn't really know, I had no idea what was causing or to really what to do about it. And I just managed it for, for many years. And then it wasn't um, until I got Lyme disease right after graduating from undergrad um, and didn't, didn't catch that right away. It became chronic. I started dealing with a lot of joint pain that I found that I found my way into alternative healthcare. Um, and, um, and it was a little over 12 years ago now that I found my way to the Nutritional Wellness Center when it was owned by Tara Lambert. And, um, and I started working with her and we started addressing a lot of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today in terms of the underlying causes of what can cause such um, unpleasant digestive issues. And you know, thankfully, quite quickly, I started, um, started to see change as, as I uh, revert, changed around my diet because um, I had been like vegetarian and I had been vegan and I had been doing a lot of things that it ultimately turned out really weren't working for me. And I started taking um, some custom supplementation to address the imbalances that had occurred. And I'm so grateful to say that I also suffer, has been so many years since I have dealt with that kind of bloating and pain um, and digestive issues. And it's that, that, um, passion and knowing about that that helps me be so excited of when I can make a difference in other people's lives and share this information with them as well. Because seven, 60 to 70 million people are in the United States are affected by digestive issues, right? So that can fall under the category of diarrhea or gas, bloating, stomach pain, frequent bowel movements, constipation. And a lot of times it's unknown. People don't know why they're having, they can have suspicions, um, but they don't really know what's causing it. And so I'm gonna start off by really helping you to understand your digestive system and how it works. So then you can see why it starts to go wrong. Because I find in my work that there are many, many reasons why people have digestive issues and have compromised digestive systems. And what we really have to do is discover what the cause is for that individual, because really anything can cause anything. And it can be surprising sometimes what's, what's throwing off the balance for each person. Um, so let's just talk about what are some symptoms of an unhealthy digestive tract, an unhealthy gut. Um, the most common are diarrhea, and constipation, and bloating. So I'm going to go into those in more detail. But before I do, let's just back up, talk about a little 
anatomy and physiology about the digestive system. So the digestive system consists of the, the body parts that work together and turn food and liquids into the building blocks and fuel that our body needs. And it is core, like it's a core function that we need um, that when working well, right, uh, facilitates it so much repair processes in our bodies and correct functioning of our bodies. So I find um, it's really true, the statement by Hippocrates all those years ago, which was all diseases begin in the gut. I do find that this is, it's a foundational thing to have to work on with um, everyone, even if they come in and their main complaint say is joint pain, right? There, there's a digestive component of that joint pain. So digestion begins even before we eat, when we smell food and we see it and we think about it, the saliva starts to form in our mouth. Um, and this can be a key place where things start to go wrong too, actually, just because of um, toxicities in people's mouth, um, metal fillings in their mouths, um, chemical exposures that have happened um, through food and through air pollution. Um, our saliva glands get damaged even at this first step. But after that, we have this long pipe called the esophagus and it moves the food down into our stomachs. And the stomach is a really important beginning step. It mixes and breaks down our food um, by contraction and relaxation of the muscle layers in the stomach. Um, it begins to break down and digest foods, particularly protein. Um, and it's a key place where absorption of B vitamins and minerals happen. Um, and so when things start to go wrong in the stomach, whether that be acid reflux or um, even just noticing excess burping, um, any kind of label um, GERD, or they, right, or different types of reflux diseases. These are all signs that the, the low pH that needs to be happening in the stomach is off. And it's so often thrown off by things further along in the digestive processes, particularly bile and bile, bile flow coming from the liver. Um, but then it means you know protein digestion is not happening correctly and mineral absorption is not happening correctly. But after being in the stomach, our food is released into the small intestine. And, um, and then that's where the liver adds bile to help with the breakdown of fats. The pancreas releases some certain enzymes too that also um, further break down carbohydrates and further break down proteins. Um, so the small intestine is really long, 22 feet long. And it's really where um, the absorption of all of our vitamins and minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats primarily takes place. Um, but I find, especially um, in my work, that a lot starts to go wrong, even just from the get-go of the release of bile from the liver and the gallbladder into um, this process working correctly. Another big role of the small intestine is it must keep out pathogens and toxins. So it, despite this critical job, our intestines are sort of like our outside on the inside, meaning that um, it's made up of, of epithelial cells, which is the same as what our skin is made up of. And it's a very thin single layer of epithelial cells that lines the inside of the small intestine. And so it can be very vulnerable and it's really at risk for damage and dysfunction. And so a crucial part of um, these epithelial cells and this gut lining and a critical part that can malfunction is what's called the tight junctions, which contain complex proteins that are between the epithelial cells. And these tight junctions connect the epithelial cells and regulate what can pass between them. So you kind of can liken it to a border control agent. Um, and when they get damaged, what happens is unwanted items like um, pathogens, bacteria, partially undigested food starts moving through these gaps um, and gets directly into the bloodstream and then causes a strong reaction from the body because that's not supposed to happen. And it, um, so there are many factors that um, damage the epithelial cells and start to create these gaps. A big part of it is parasites, which I'll, I'll be talking more about. Um, toxicities as well. 
um, particularly toxicities in foods, and then um, uh, foods that often people are reactive to, such as wheats and corns and soys. Um, and so when um, this leakiness starts to happen in the, gap, the junctions, these items end up in our bloodstream. Uh, so this is what I just mentioned a moment, but um, it's particularly yeah, sugar, wheat, corn, soy, um, and a big factor of why people are so reactive to these foods, particularly in the United States compared to other countries, is because of the pesticides on these foods, particularly the pesticide Roundup, which is also known as glyphosate. Um, so a big part of healing the digestive lining is pulling these foods um, that we've become so reactive to out of our diets um, and thus reducing uh, our glyphosate exposure. Uh, but I wanted to say just one more thing about those, um, those junctions is the reason, so I'll back up a second and just say that um, the reason this causes such a reaction is because then these, these um, part the particles that are supposed to be broken further down by the small intestine and processed by our body in a different way, they move through these ju gut junctions, they end up in the bloodstream, they end up in broader circulation. And then that's when our immune system really kicks in because it's like, hey, this stuff isn't supposed to be here. Um, and that can be a big part of then the body developing allergies or an autoimmune response. Um, the body starts attacking itself because it's, it's overly worked up um, having to address so much more internally that it shouldn't have to. All right, so let's talk about basics of when things can go wrong, right? So diarrhea is um, when there are frequent watery bowel movements, it can increase your risk of dehydration, and it can be a, a, an issue with malnutrition as well when the chronic so when the diarrhea is chronic, uh, because things are just moving through your system too fast and you're not absorbing nutrients properly. And it's just incredibly common, right? It's characterized by loose or watery stools and an urgent need to run to the restroom. And so what causes it? Gen generally, it's imbalances in our, what is called our microbiome, our gut flora. So it's usually an imbalance of, that has been caused often by overuse of antibiotics um, and then an overgrowth of certain pathogens, whether that be parasites or whether that be certain yeast or certain bacteria. For sure, there's such a connection between our brain and um, our digestive tract along what's called our vagal nerve that high stress you know, can um, can create loose bowel movements and diarrhea as well. And then of course, there can always be an acute um, situation such as food poisoning. And so one of the main ways to combat it, and I find that clients are most su successful is really getting the gut flora back into balance. So this can often be involving different herbs that help knock back the unwanted parasites, the unwanted yeasts, such as candidas, and replenishing with the good, um, whether that be a certain fiber to feed good probiotics, or whether that be actual introduction of different probiotics. Um, having people eliminate the foods that are really irritating and damaging the digestive tract. Um, working to avoid antibiotics whenever possible, only using them when it's uh, really needed acutely. And then of course, ongoing work that we all have to do of managing stress. Constipation is generally characterized by having less than three bowel movements a week. So stools become hard, have to strain to be passed to eliminate them. It can be very painful, um, may cause hemorrhoids. Um, it can be very unpleasant. And there can be many causes of constipation can be contributed to lack of exercise, dehydration, people will be uncomfortable about having a bowel movement and thus holding it in. Um, low fiber diets in terms of eating a diet very high in processed food or high in sugar, especially in foods where the fiber has been removed, 
Um, yep. Again, you're seeing a theme, parasitic infections, candida overgrowth, environmental toxins, as we were referring to earlier, like glyphosate is such a big one. And I find um, medications as well can, can contribute to this. And, and the big issue with constipation, and, and I find it's an issue with so many of the clients I work with, especially clients dealing with chronic pain, chronic headaches, um, is that the bodies are not properly eliminating toxins um, because this is done through the bowel and through bowel movements. So your liver processes contaminants that are filtered from your blood and then secretes them into the bile, right? So the bile is made in the liver, put into the gallbladder, and then when you eat fatty foods, it releases um, from the gallbladder into your small intestine, helps you break down fats. But it also does so much more, right? The bile is a place where toxins get concentrated and it's a way of releasing them into the body or releasing them out of the body through regular bowel movements. Um, it's also, that's just also a way we filter out excess hormones and some other, um, some other things too. So regular bowel movements, ideally at the minimum once a day, more likely twice to three times a day is a really a sign of a healthy functioning digestive tract. Um, and when that doesn't happen, then, then toxins recirculate. And that can be um, a big part of, of why people feel so unwell, have skin issues, have pain issues, have headaches. So bloating and gas are um, major complaints that I see um, with my clients. So ab abdominal bloating occurs when the GI tract is filled with air, gas, and people describe this as feeling full or tight or swollen. Sometimes the abdomen can be hard and painful. Um, I have people who tell me, well, I look five months pregnant after I eat. Um, it can be accompanied by pain, excessive gas, frequent burping or belching, and lots of abdominal rumbling and gurgles, gurgling. And so what causes this bloating? Again, you're seeing this theme of imbalances in the gut microbiome, right? So it can be parasitic infections, something that's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or you might've heard of referred to as SIBO, candida overgrowth. Um, and then this the issue I was just talking about in terms of constipation and the, and the recirculation of toxins. And so how to combat bloating. So for sure, slowing down, chewing your food well, um, being aware of the amount of carbohydrates in your diet, being educated about the difference between like simple carbohydrates such as um, sugars um, and complex carbohydrates in terms of certain vegetables, um, making sure you're drinking enough water. But, uh, and, uh, and I would add another one onto here, in the process of removing pathogens, it would be correcting bile flow and liver function because I, I see that as a key reason why the pathogens overgrow in the first place. And so it becomes a key part of actually um, eliminating the reasons why the liver has started to struggle so much and the bile flow has become so compromised, um, which is often examining the role of toxicities in your, in your life, in your diet, through exposure, through food, water, personal care products, and of course, outside factors where, where you live. Is it air pollution or is it um, you know, farming, country farm pollution, both in terms of um, pesticides and fungicides? It's really through that process that then you can, you can get rid, you totally can get rid of the pathogens. And this was a, such a key thing for myself. Um, I found um, through the work of, of doing nutrition response testing that like I just had a crazy overgrowth of, of fungal issues and parasitic issues and, and a toxicity component that um, you know, my bile flow was really gum, gummed up. I would say gone really sticky bile ducts were just not releasing bile properly. 
was having gallbladder issues, um, constipated, and it was really had contributed to why um, the bloating and the pain had gotten so bad. Um, and another part of why this is so important is that 70% of our immune system is found in the gut. So as I was mentioning earlier, the immune system cells underneath our gut lining spring into action when unwelcome and unwanted immune molecules pa pass through. So they're working to put the microbes and toxins and undigested, undigested food out of commission. Um, but this ends up being a lot of work that the body shouldn't have to do. Um, distracts your immune system. It can uh, preoccupy it with all these other things, and it, but it also can compromise it so that then um, you're not having a healthy response to other immune challenges. And can be a part of why um, people get sick frequently or are more susceptible to colds and sicknesses or, and, that are going around. And so I bring this up just because, you know, this is an ongoing thing that we are talking about um, in terms of how to stay well and be well and um, getting to the root of digestive issues um, can be a huge component of just being a healthy individual overall. And so as you can tell from my story and from the work that I do, that I see a key part of how to improve digestive health is really to find out for the individual what has gone wrong. Um, why has why the system gotten so out of balance? And for me personally, and for the clients that I help regularly, a key tool for this has been nutrition response testing. So nutrition response testing is a non-invasive system and it's designed to assist um, a practitioner's assessment of the underlying causes of ill health. So um, me as a nutrition response testing practitioner, I monitor neurological reflexes and, and I look and I ask through these different reflexes of the body, ask the questions of like, what barriers is the body running into so that it, it's not optimally well. And, and we work to identify the immune challenges that are there, the um, toxicities that are there, the food sensitivities that are there, and um, design a custom support to help, the, help an individual work through those stages because it's, it's a slow process of repairing the digestive tract. And it takes time, right? Um, but it's, uh, it's really individualized, customized, and I find absolutely gets to the root of it. And so I encourage um, anyone who's listening who has not either come to the Nutritional Wellness Center and had an analysis, or if you're not in Ithaca, New York, um, finding a nutrition response testing practitioner that is in your area um, can be a key missing piece for, for finding out um, why your digestive system has gotten so upset. Um, in our office, we also do um, nutritional coaching. So a huge part of our program and what we do is helping to teach people how to eat right for themselves, how to move away from processed foods, processed sugars, um, put in these foundations that have been lost in terms of traditional diets, um, how our ancestors used to eat and how we need to eat now in this modern world to truly heal and repair and be healthy. And so uh, a service that we offer and that we are, um, is currently on sale because it's National Nutrition Month and we are celebrating that by um, having our nutrition coaching program be on sale is a program that um, can be done virtually as well as in person. And it's something that, you know, someone can benefit from whether they're, um, Kind of brand new to the office and just wanting to know where to begin with diet and address all the confusion that ha is happening currently in terms of what's the right way to eat and how should you take care of yourself, um, as well as helping to address um, specific issues like constipation, bloating, diarrhea, but also can be a great tool if you're actually doing the nutrition response testing program and you just feel like you need a uh, additional focus and additional education um, and resources about 
about how to eat well. So um, if you're interested in that as well, just head, reach out to our office. It's info at nutritionalwellnesscenter.com um, or give us a call and we will give you all the details on that. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. If you have um, any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me in the chat. I will hang out here for a few minutes. And um, once we have the recording of this, we will also send this out. So please share it with friends and family. Way too many people are suffering. They don't like to talk about it. It feels too personal or too um, uncom uncomfortable, but it's actually a, a significant sign that things are going really wrong with their, um, their, their body, their absorption, utilization of nutrients, and thus the overall functioning of the body that needs to be corrected in terms of reaching overall optimal health.